What is going on everybody? It's your boy Matty with the Bleacher Kings and I'm coming at you with a how-to video on how to install NCAA 14 College Football Revamped for the PC here in the year 2024. Before we get started, do me a solid slap the like button. If you're new or coming across the channel, consider hitting that sub button, man. I'd greatly appreciate it. We're really trying to grow this channel. I'm starting over fresh. Trying to grow this channel, man. I appreciate each and every single one of you hitting that sub button for me. And let me know in the comments. Uh, if you're brand new to college football revamped or if you are returning trying to re-download let me know in the comments i have everything already downloaded right here as you can see but i'm going to run you through where to get it how to get it all of that stuff the only thing i cannot put in the description or show you how to download is the actual game if you have the disc version great if you do not have the disc version and you want the game i will say this go to google type in vims lair vims lair v-i-m-m-s lair l-a-l-a-i-r type that in in google and it will pop up there and you go to the playstation 3 section and you can find what you need right there i'm not going to show you guys that but that is what you should do first pause the video go there if you do not have the disc version already on your pc get the game and then come back here do that for me pause the video like i said come back if you already have it great let's get started what we're going to do first is we're going to be getting the RPCS3 emulator. This is how we're going to play the game on the PC. It's the first link in the description, and it's going to bring us here. And you're going to go up here. I always go up here, hit download, and then you'll go down here to whatever window you're on, Windows, or whatever system you're on, Windows, Linux, Mac. Uh, I'm on Windows, so I would hit download right here, and it will pop up in your downloads. But like I said, I already have that, so I don't need it. So get that downloaded. All right, we're going to download everything first and then we're going to go through the steps. So bear with me. Next up is going to be College Football Revamp, the mod for the actual NCAA 14 game. Second link in the description is going to bring us over here to their GitHub page. Shout out to these guys who have made it possible to play this game 10 years later. All right, so once you get to this website, all right, you're going to scroll down. You're going to click the PC version as that is what we were doing this on on our PC. So you're going to click PC. Whether you have the uh, Vim's Lair copy or whether you have the disc copy, you're going to click physical disc copy. I always do the ESPN scoreboard. All right. And here is where you're going to choose whether you want to, if, you have a use, if you're using a PlayStation controller or an Xbox controller. I was on a PlayStation, but I ran into some issues, and we'll get into that later in the video. So if you have those issues, I will have a fix for you. Um, so, but I'm, I, I decided I'm going to do this on my Xbox because it's just so much easier for me. So I do the Xbox buttons and then I will do PC disc 7.29 gigabytes. It's going to take a minute again while you're downloading this. Go ahead and pause the video. I'm going to hit download. I already have it, so I don't need it. But like I said, if you are downloading it, which you should be, if you're watching this video, go ahead and pause the video and then we can move on to the next step. All right, now that you have your college football revamp version that you've chose, whether it's PlayStation controller or Xbox controller, that is downloaded. Next up is the link in the description for the PS firmware update. That's going to be the third link. Shout out to Mutt Geezer. This is uh, his media fire uh, upload for us. Super appreciate him in the community. Uh, I will leave his link to his channel in the description. Give him a look, guys. He's been doing this for a while. And he's, he's an overall good dude, so make sure you go check his stuff out. Anyways, now that we're here, we're going to hit that drop down, and you'll hit download, and then you'll download it right here. Again, I have that, so I don't need it. And now that we have everything downloaded, we can go ahead and exit out of all these windows as we no longer need them. First thing and foremost, we're going to create a new folder on our desktop. So right-click, new folder, and I'm going to name it PS3 Emulator. I don't think it really matters uh, what, what you name it, but this is what I name it, just like that. After I have it named, I'm going to go ahead and open up the file, uh, the folder itself. And then I'm going to open up the RCPR WinRAR file, 7-zip file, whatever the case may be. And now that this is open, I'm going to highlight all of this up to this test folder. And I'm going to drag and drop it right here into my PS3 Emulator folder. Boom, now that that's done, we can go ahead and exit out of that. And I just delete the icon because I no longer need it in here. Now that we have this all in here, we're going to go ahead and open up this RPCS3 application. This is all right. We're going to hit more info and run anyway. Now that it pops up like this, what it says here is you can create a desktop icon 
or shortcut and a start menu shortcut. I, I do the desktop because it's easier. So when I'm playing down the line, I don't have to go into this folder, go to that. I can just have the RPCS3 right on my desktop. And I like to use dark theme. And then down here, you got to check. I have read the quick start guide. And then I always do do not show me again because this will pop up every time you open it and then hit continue. All right. Now that we're in here, before we do anything, that PS3 update dot pop file that we downloaded last that should be on your desktop or wherever you had it drag and drop that right into the emulator install firmware yes doesn't take long boom good to go i always do that i'm just sick of the pop-ups that's just me personally so press ok keep that file do not delete that file because we're going to need it later in the video so do not delete that file yet it's going to be compiling your module, sticking everything into it, whatever it is, whatever it's doing. Let it do. Let it run its course. should only take a little bit, and uh, then we'll move on. All right. Now that our firmware is up to date, there's a, some configuration stuff that we're going to do. So now that we have that, what we're going to do, I'm going to minimize my folder here so it's a little bit easier to see, and then I'm just going to full screen this for you guys. All right. So in here, I like to hit the config. It opens up your settings configuration. In the CPU tab, I leave everything absolutely as it is. And then we can move over to the GPU tab. Uh, make sure that your graphics card obviously is selected. If you're on a two PC setup, I don't really know much about that or how that all works. So just make sure you have the right one for the computer that you're on. And then up here in default resolution, depending on your monitor, whatever that is, mine's a 1920 by 1080. So I'm gonna select that. The resolution scale, you can go as high as you really want here, whatever your GPU will hold, but I always just keep mine to what my resolution on my monitor is. So mine's a 1920, 1080, so that's 150%. This I leave the same. Uh, up here in shader mode, um, I don't know too much about it other than know I've had the best luck clicking legacy. And why do I have legacy? <coughs> Excuse me. I have legacy because there's an issue in, with this mod, this game, whatever the case may be. There's an issue where the field is black stuff is just black so i've noticed i've had the best luck with just legacy single threaded so that's what i choose to do um, if you guys want to try other ones you can but just know that this is where i've had the best luck uh, every time i've played the game additional settings down here uh right cuff color buffers i don't know really too much about it all i know is i guess it helps out with the same thing so we do that all i'm going to do is press apply so it applies these but we're going to keep going down these tabs so if you press save it will just close it out next up is the audio tab in the audio tab, all I change here is down by audio settings is convert to 16 bit. And then up here, I just enable buffering. Uh, there's a, there, if you don't have that 16 bit, what I believe happens is the audio is really annoying and cracky. So just make sure you click convert that to 16 bit and enable buffering and you should be good. Apply again. I don't do anything in IO. I don't do anything in system, network, advanced emulator. Only thing I do is go into the GUI. And then I go down here to where it says check for updates on startup. I press no, because you don't want, if it you open your emulator and it says update now, you don't, you don't ever want to do that. Just wait for the updates to come out correctly and just leave it be. Just make sure it's just annoying for it to pop up. If you don't check it, that's fine. You just press no every time it pops up, whatever the case may be for you, press apply and then save. And that's good there. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up our controller. Now I will say this. So you go to the pad, or excuse me. So you go to the pads tab. This is where the controller settings are going to be. I will say this. I was trying to use a PS5 controller before. And I had nothing but issues. The first time I downloaded it before this tutorial, I, well, I re-downloaded it. Uh, I had everything mapped right, working right, and everything was good. I do know, I will note this first, with a PS5 controller, you have to remap all the buttons. And I'll show you what to pick for your specific controller. But I don't know how to do it correctly myself to put it in the tutorial so down in the description if you are using a playstation 5 controller i will link a video to a dude who has showed you how to do everything with the ps5 controller that will be linked in the description if you choose to use a ps5 controller i'm going back and using my xbox controller because i had no issues but to switch your input for your controller you go up here to handlers Drop down by keyboard. Obviously, the DualShock 3 and 4 is a PS3 and 4 controller. DualSense, I think maybe that's the PlayStation 5. I'm not sure. The DualSense, I don't know what that is. Skateboard X input is for your uh, Xbox controller. So that's what I'm going to be on, Xbox controller right here. 
All right, so X input is for your Xbox, and then MMJ joyst MM joystick that would be for your PlayStation Five, from my understanding. All right, so we're gonna save that. That's the controller settings. All right, now that we did that, we got our controller settings set up. We got our our firmware in here. Um, we got our configuration done. The next step that we need to do is now get the actual NCAA football game installed. So I'm gonna exit out of my emulator now. We'll open it up after. All right. So with this, we're going to open up our PS3 emulator folder again, all right? And I've noticed this a few downloads that it was missing some folders. So I'm going to show you guys what to do if you're missing folders as well. So in your PS3 emulator folder, you're going to go to dev underscore HDD zero. And then in here, see, this is my fresh download of it that there's no disk folder. And that's where the game needs to go. So if you don't have a disk folder either, just right click new folder all lowercase just name it disk all right and then uh i just refresh it so it goes where it needs to be open the disk folder all right in your disk folder you're then going to open up your ncaa 14 winrar or 7 zip file all right and then this folder right here the ncaa 14 usa i got mine from vim's lair shame on me whatever um, we're going to drag and drop this right into our disk folder all right, let that do its thing. It's going to take a couple of minutes to, to do it. Let it extract fully into the folder. All right, now that we have this installed into our uh, disk folder, in the description, there's going to be a line that starts with like blues31159. Copy that, and that's what you have to rename this file to. So you're going to obviously rename it, copy that, and it should be exactly as it is in the description for this to work. So now that we have this in here, we can go ahead and open that. And in here it says PS3 game, but there should be a PS3 update folder. Mine does not have it. So what we're going to do again is right click new folder and you're going to all capitals PS3 underscore uh, all capitals, like I said, update. Inside that PS3 update folder, we're going to open that and we're going to create a new folder again. And it's going to be all uppercase, just update. All right. And inside that update folder, like I told you guys to keep that file, that PS3 update.pup, we're going to just drag and drop that right in there. Boom. Easy as that. All right. So now that we have all that done, we can go back to our, all the way to our emulator folder. Uh, for some reason, uh, I don't know why it didn't give me a icon for my desktop or maybe it didn't i just can't find it but anyways fire up your rpcs3 application again and now you should be able to see the ncaa 14 uh, game right in there just like that all right so now that we have that done and we have that in there oh there it is right there on my desktop i didn't see it uh, now that we have that the college football revamped package that we downloaded it should be version 21 currently at the time of this video you're just going to take it, drag and drop it right into uh, your emulator and press yes. And what this is doing now is putting the mod into the game. So give it a, it should, shouldn't take too, too long depending. But anyways, let that do its thing, run its course like everything else. And then we will be good to go. All right. Now that you see it says successfully installed software from packages. I do that so that doesn't show up anymore. And now you should see a college football revamped icon right there. So you're going to highlight your, your college football revamp, press play. Takes a second to actually initially start it up. That's perfectly fine. Just gonna let it, like I said, run its course and start up. It should be like this, compiling this stuff. It takes a few minutes also for this. It's the first time you're opening the game. So just let it do its thing and we'll be running shortly. Now that that all did that, that thing. So this is showing us that we are now in college football revamp. Now, if you guys wanna go full screen mode, Alt enter puts you in full screen mode if you did not know that already. Anyways, so we're in the game. You see it's still compiling shaders, so it might be a little bit laggy. Press your start button. I said alt enter, buddy. And then you can pick your favorite team. Whatever your favorite team is, you can pick that. Uh, uh, mine is Clemson. Shout out Clemson Tigers, baby. And now we're inside the game, guys. Now we're inside the game, and just like that, you have college football revamped. I will say this. If you're new to this, guys, and you go to do a dynasty... Uh, continue to view offline dynasty files. I don't know anything about online. I don't think there is any online of it and you can, you know, create your new dynasty like that play. Now you can still do your road to glories, all of that stuff, guys. 
I hope this video helped you out, and I hope you're uh, fired up to play some college football revamp as we wait for the new NCAA game. If this helped you out in any way possible, guys, do me a solid. Slap the like button like I said in the beginning. And if this helped you out and you want to see more content, let me know in the comments. But also, make sure you hit that sub button, guys. If you need any help, leave me some comment in the, in the, in the comment section, and I will make sure I'll be reading them to help you guys out as best as I can. I hope you guys have a blessed day. That's all I got, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.